The American Revolution was a crucial part of our history. I'm Valor Nguyen, and today I will be talking about the stages of the American Revolution with my partner, Natalie Moore. Before the American Revolution, the British were fighting France in the Seven Years' War. Although Britain won, the war was costly and created a lot of debt. Britain decided that it should be the colonists' responsibility to pay the debt because the victory allowed them to be safer and added land to their territory. However, the colonists did not share the same views and soon decided that they wanted independence from Britain. Britain was weakened by their debt, and the colonists became unhappy when they were taxed heavily to pay off this debt. The British imposed many acts upon the colonists, including the Stamp Act, Townshend Tariffs, Tea Act, and Sugar Act. The Stamp Act was passed in 1765 and stated that all print material must have a stamp on it, which the colonists had to pay for. The Townshend Tariffs passed in 1767 placed a tax on any goods that were imported into the colonies. This led to the colonists boycotting many British goods in order to avoid paying the tax. The Tea Act of 1773 placed a tax on tea, and the Sugar Act of 1764 placed a tax on sugar, both of which were an essential part of the daily life of a colonist. The colonists were upset with all these taxes because they were being taxed without representation in Parliament, and the citizens living in England were not paying the same taxes. The colonists decided that something had to be done if they wanted a change. The American colonists held the first Continental Congress in 1774. During this meeting, the colonists informed Parliament of their grievances. Some things that were addressed included their anger on the taxes that they had to pay, and the constant watch that they had to bear from the British Army. They were mostly angered at the taxes because they were taxed without having representation in Parliament. The colonists wanted more rights as citizens. In the Second Continental Congress, the colonists adopted the Declaration of Independence. This document stated that the colonists intended to become independent from Great Britain if there were no changes in their policies. The Declaration was the colonists' way of showing Britain that they were going to break off all political ties to the country. After their peaceful attempts at negotiating with the British failed, the colonists turned to more violent acts. The Boston Massacre involved a street fight between British soldiers and colonists. At one point, a British soldier fired into the crowd, and the aftermath included five deaths and three injuries. This caused the colonists to demand the removal of British troops. In addition, a group of people calling themselves the Sons of Liberty rebelled by throwing tea into the Boston Harbor. Eventually, the first shot of the American Revolution, which is also known as the shot heard around the world, was fired. British troops clashed with colonists in Lexington, and one of the sides fired the first shot. This led to a fight that is considered to be the spark that started the American Revolution. After years of fighting, the colonies became independent when Britain signed the Treaty of Paris in 1783. At this time, Britain formally recognized America as an independent country. The new country had to form a new government, which was first started when the Articles of Confederation was adopted. It was first proposed by Benjamin Franklin. The Articles of Confederation was what provided the basis for governing the country and was created in a time of wartime urgency based upon the need for foreign recognition and aid and the growth of a national feeling. This document consisted of 13 articles that allowed the states to be independent in their government. If required, Congress was, was the last resort on appeal for disputes. Congress attempted several times to amend the Articles of Confederation but failed each time. Although the colonies were independent from Britain, they still faced some problems among themselves. First of all, the Articles of Confederation were created quickly in a time of war, so there were bound to be some revisions needed. The first problem was that the Articles of Confederation were unclear on how the nation's debt was to be split up among the states. It was supposed to be based on the state's population, but there was debate as to whether slaves should count toward the population used in determining the fraction of the debt given to the state. Another problem was that some people believed there to be economical and civil rights injustices in the Articles of Confederation. One such person was Daniel Shays, who led Shays' Rebellion. Around 4,000 rebels participated in an armed uprising in Massachusetts, protesting the Articles of Confederation. The rebellion caused the government to see the weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation. The final solution of the revolution was a new government based on the Constitution rather than the Articles of Confederation. The Constitution was signed in 1787 and had established America's fundamental laws. The first ten amendments of the Constitution was the Bill of Rights, which contained basic rights such as freedom of speech. The Constitution also prohibits the deprivation of a person's life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Another important part of the Constitution is that it separated the powers of the government into three different branches so each branch would keep the other branches in check. 
The Constitution ended up creating a solution to America being able to govern on its own. The American Revolution was a successful revolution overall, and it influenced the world in many ways. It inspired the French to overthrow their monarchy in a revolution of their own. It also spread the idea of equal rights for all people, causing the beginning of the abolitionist movement in which people tried to abolish slavery. As the colonies separated from Britain, they also removed some British traditions, including the tradition of land inheritance. In addition, the states began experimenting with Republican ideas, creating individual constitutions and laws for individual states. Therefore, the world would be extremely different if the American Revolution had not taken place and altered the course of history.